The rates of new product introduction and adoption are speeding up. It took 46 years for electricity to reach 25% of the US population. The same milestone took 35 years for the telephone and only 7 for the internet. For most of us, it is increasingly difficult to understand or anticipate long-term technological trends. It is common, especially in the context of human rights practice, that such inability stokes fears of a dystopian future in which ordinary people, especially those already marginalized or disenfranchised, become subjugated by technology rather than benefiting from it. This chapter is both an attempt to help practice Instead, practitioners have adapted the majority of tools they use in the field from existing technologies. There are a small number of exceptions, composed largely of software projects around information management or communications. This includes projects like MARTIS and OpenEPSIS, which were created specifically for human rights documentation, 
and privacy-enhancing mobile apps like those created by The Guardian Project. It also includes projects like PGP encryption in the Tor Internet Browser, which were created by forward-thinking individuals who understood very early on in the information era that privacy and anonymity were instrumental to human rights. Using a diverse array of material, Amnesty was able to corroborate victim and eyewitness statements with official government documents and video and photographic evidence, as well as provide context for this visual and textual evidence. Further, Amnesty also shared its findings with the Nigerian authorities during dozens of meeting us, as well as 55 written submissions, requesting information and specific action to address the violations. An important consideration when thinking about technology is the fact that the same type of adaptation that human rights practitioners can make to advance accountability, transparency, and justice could be made by other actors, from governments and corporations to organized criminals and non-state actors. Technology has helped human rights practitioners detect audio like explosions, gunshots, or screaming in video collections, detect and count the number of people in a given frame of a video, aid in the geolocation of a video and synchronize multiple videos taken by different sources at the same time and place to create a composite view of an incident. Contemporary examples of this include the use of remote sensing by international organizations to find incidents of violence or cultural heritage destruction, the growing interest in unmanned aerial vehicles, WAFs, or drones, to access unreachable areas, and the use of DNA technology by forensic anthropologists to uncover evidence of mass atrocities. Finally, we must consider what type of technology we should be prepared to confront in the future. What most practitioners assume fits under human rights technology lies within the realm of information and communication technologies, or ICTs. But the uses of technology in the human rights context already go beyond this domain. In conclusion, technological advancements help us to ensure that the security of the human population is safeguarded and that no laws violate.